Amen. God bless Pastor Bert and his mission. We're going to have a time now where, we get, where we're going to go into tithing and offering. But listen how we're going to do it this morning. We, we made a decision together as, as two churches that is on mission together. We said that, that everything cash-wise, so if, if the offering boxes or at least comes through, and you give a donation, we're going to find a project that will keep on supporting what we are doing here today. So nothing goes to Murleta Kerk. Nothing goes to 3C as such. We, we want to we continue our, our project of building a better South Africa. So can I encourage you this morning for the people in-house to give generously because that's one of the statements where we worship also by means of our giving. So, so you will see at the, at the end of, um, of the rows, there will be a bag that will be coming through. So you can do so long. Ideal, the main stuff that is here. There's a little act. Weet jy wat noem jy dit in Engels nie? Jy kan hoor ek sikkel. Collecte sakkies. Um, offering bags. Is that what we're going to call it? Okay. You call it an offering bag, but it will come through. But listen to this. There's even a more important thing. Scan here to donate. I want to encourage you. Go and scan that and you will see that if you're on Morleta Kerk, you can make a donation there. And if you are on 3C, you can go and make a donation there. And it's beautiful. You will see how they, how they figured that one out um, and put it together. But... My heart for you is, my heart for each and every one of us this morning is to say, let's give because nothing is possible without people giving. Nothing is, is possible. There's no way that the gospel of Jesus can get hands and feet if we don't create spaces where we can say, yes, God trusted me with this and I will be happy and I will be glad to give freely, Amen. abundantly to what God wants to come and do through my life. So, kom ons gebruik hierdie geleentheid ook vir oogend om, om vrijdag te gee. There is, um, you can also, as you are walking out, if you want to make a donation, you are more than welcome to do that. Otherwise, let's just spend some time in the presence of God as we are giving. And um, whether it's by, by the sc- scanning the code or whether you want to be giving something physical, all of it is worship. All of it is going to God and all of it will glorify this unity project to reconcile the whole world with Christ Jesus. So it will be coming through. Um, you can give with a glad heart. Thank you very much. you so long the rhythm of hope dances if you read your newspapers you will you probably saw them two weeks ago in some of the newspapers telling this incredible story of how young people turns mourning in our informal settlements into dancing and bringing hope where there was no hope and this is an incredible story the rhythm of hope they've been working with the school here on campus the pure hope school they've been working in plastic view and they are changing people's lives by means of the arts and by means of their God-given gifts. There's so many gifts in this place. We don't even know they exist before God breathes his breath over it. And all of a sudden, we, we become what God calls us to be. So enjoy this and enjoy what God has placed in their hearts.
Well, praise the Lord. Let's give Jesus a hand of praise. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Let me greet Domini van der Spur. Thank you so much and your wife to have me here. Let me greet Pastor Bird in absentia and Pastor Shane who's here with us. And let me greet the Morelta, Moreleta Kirk and the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's as far as I can go, folks. Don't push me further than that. Amen. Also greet 3C in the name of Jesus. Amen. I have a few people to greet, to acknowledge. We've got campuses that are joining us here. We've got uh, the campus in Alberton, the campus in Cape Town. Welcome and greetings. Johannesburg North, Pulukwane, Pochistrum, Brits, uh, Oliven Holtzbosch, Moy Plus, uh, and Valfis Bay, 3C Active, Pretoria West, Soshanguva, Ivory Park, and also Moraleta Kalahari. Let's welcome them and greet them, all the campuses. And we are also on different platforms, Impact Radio, Chao TV, and our online audience. Let's clap hands and welcome all of them in the name of Jesus. Wow. This is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. I want to go straight to the word of the Lord. Oh, they need to move something quickly. Sure. Let's thank God for the technical team. Amen. They are helping us to get the message across. Amen. Let's look at Revelations chapter 7, verse 9 to 17. I've got a couple of scriptures to read. Uh, we thank God for the heritage that God has given us. And I've entitled today's sermon, Christ, our heritage. Everybody say, Christ, our heritage. So heritage is a wonderful thing because it's something where we celebrate our uniqueness. We celebrate our diversity. We celebrate the goodness of the Lord who has made us diverse people, unique people, rich cultures to glorify his name. And the ultimate expression is in Revelation chapter 7, verse 9 to 17, where the Bible says, After these things I looked and behold, a great multitude which no one could number of all nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice saying, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and the elders and the four living creatures and fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and forever. Amen. When we see the nations gather, the reasons why the Lord made beautiful cultures and beautiful tribes and beautiful languages and beautiful peoples is so that we could give him glory because he deserves the honor. He deserves the glory. God did not make us different for us to become different. He made us different for us to bring a diversity of worship and a diversity of glorification of his name. And so we see here in the book of Revelations that this is the ultimate picture People from everywhere, tongues, tribes, standing before the throne, clothed in white robes, honoring God, worshiping God. This is the ultimate picture that God is looking for 
in the name of Jesus. So we can start now on earth. And this is beautiful because this is a beautiful picture of that ultimate picture that God desires to see. Now, where does this all begin? Genesis 11, verse 1 to 9, the Bible says now, when the whole earth had one language and one speech. Can you believe it? There was a day we had one language and one speech. Can you believe it? These are the origins. So let's go back to what happened. Come with me. Now the whole earth had one language and one speech. And it came to pass, verse number two, as they journeyed from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Shena, and they dwelt there. Then they said to one another, come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They had brick for stone, they had asphalt for mortar, and they said, verse number four, very important, come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves. Let, lest we be scattered abroad the face of the earth, of the whole earth. Verse number five. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And the Lord said, indeed, the people are one and they all have one language. And this is what they begin to do. Now, nothing they propose to do will be withheld from them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language. That they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth. And they ceased building the city. Therefore, its name is called Babel where we take Babylon, confusion, because there the Lord confused their language of all the earth. And from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. So the implication of the scripture is there was a point in time when God created one language, one speech, one people, one culture, one tradition, one human race. And all these people were just one. But unfortunately, pride crept in. And the Bible says, and that verse number four is the critical verse. Because the Bible says that in verse number four, they said to themselves, come, let us make a city for ourselves and make a name for ourselves. Pride comes before a fall. Unfortunately, as much as heritage is a beautiful thing, the foundation of heritage is pride. And when God looks at the pride of each nation and how we stand before God, and how we all pride ourselves with our languages and our traditions and whatever, the underlying issue that divided the nations to become the various nations is pride. Because they said, we want to make a name for ourselves. Warning. Here's the warning. The warning is, there's only one God to worship. There's only one God we are supposed to be worshiping. And the moment we begin to worship self, Pride in human nature, pride in who we are, that foundation brings confusion. God said, let's go down and confuse them lest they are united in pride. Lest they are united in competing with God. We will reach the heavens. We will be almost sounding like the enemy. We will be like the most high. Let's reach the heavens. Do not test God in his rightful space. He is God to be worshipped and to be honored. And so it's amazing that languages came because of God confusing humanity because of their pride. Interesting, isn't it? And we know how terrible 
our division can be. We know how the negative, we see the positives of heritage, but unfortunately there's a lot of negatives in the heritage. Just to quote one of the issues in our continent, remember this genocide of the Tutsis and the Hutus in Rwanda. Because of heritage, some say we are the ones, the others say we are the ones, and then they cleaned each other out. 500 to 600,000 people killed because of heritage. We know our situation in South Africa, our past, our ugly past of segregation, how that has cost us because of heritage. We also know as we speak in the East, between Palestine and Israel, what's going on there? Heritage. So heritage can be based on human pride. Heritage can have the foundation of human pride and can be very costly. It can shed blood. Our differences can shed blood. We know the tribal wars of Africa. How because of our different tribal pride, people fought each other, killed thousands because of dominance, heritage. And so God says, don't base your whole faith on your human heritage because your human heritage is fallible. Your human heritage has got weaknesses. Your human heritage has got lots of, you know, trial and errors and it's got a lot of blood in its hands. Our pride must be in Christ alone. Our pride must be in Jesus alone. The real heritage, it's in God. The one who is the creator of the heavens and the earth. Who said, let us make man after our image, after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the earth. It is God's will for us to, you know, derive our inheritance in him in Christ. Look at the book of Acts chapter 17 that deals with the same concept of origins. Acts 17, 26 to 31. The Bible says, and he has made from one blood. He has made from what? One blood. He has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth and has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings, verse 27, so that they should seek the Lord. So the reason why he has made, if you can all look at, our, at, at the color of our blood, it's all red. Oops. There's no Zulu blood. There's no Africans blood. There's no Engelse blood. There's no Pedi blood. There's only one blood, human blood. It's all red. That's powerful. So what's going on? What's this whole thing of I am this, I am that, I am the other, I am. It's a whole human pride. It's pride. It's based on pride. The foundation is human pride. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I know this is like a, you know, it's an anticlimax. Because this is a heritage day. Come on, please say something nice about it. But before God, all things must bow. All things must bow. All languages must bow. All traditions must bow. All cultures must bow. And so God says, he made all these and he determined their boundaries. He determined where they should stay, where they should live. Why? So that they will seek the Lord. So the, so the whole thing is about seeking the Lord. Not about pride in who we are. About seeking the Lord. Lord, we seek for you. It says, so that we will seek the Lord in the hope that they might grow for him and find him though he is not far from each one of us for in him not in ourselves in him we live in him we move in him we have our being so also some of your own poets have said for we are also his offspring 
That is why when Jesus came on earth, the final sacrifice, so that this whole confusion is stopped, God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to come and to shed his blood for all humanity, to stop the whole confusion of people walking in their sins. In fact, <laughs> it's a fallen status that we are proud of our heritage. Oops. It is, it is a fallen nature because if you trace it, it was all based on pride. So God says, in fact, while you're busy being proud of your heritage, it's a demonstration of your fallenness and its emptiness. I know people who, you see, because what is heritage? Heritage is identity. Heritage is about identity. So if your identity is based on human fallibleness and human weakness, that identity is not longevous, does not sustain, will not stand the test of time. Besides, culture is dynamic. Hello? Nothing is original. Culture evolves so much. I mean, you look at what looks, you know, Africans today and Africans 40 years ago, two different types of Afrikaner people. Zulu people today, Zulu people 20, 40 years ago, two different, because culture evolves. Some of us can't even speak a clear word in our own vernacular language without popping in some English or something. Hello. You know what I'm talking about. It's dynamic. It's evolving. Meaning it's not permanent. We cannot pride ourselves with a human inheritance. Our pride must be in God. Our pride must be in Christ. In him we live. In him we move. In him we have our inheritance. In him we find unity. Genuine unity outside of Christ is very short-lived. Genuine cooperation outside of Christ, it's very fake. It's a fake unity. It's, it's the kind of unity that Peter did when he saw, you know, the Gentiles. And Paul said, I have an issue with you, Peter. When you are with the, Gen when you are with the Gentiles, you're all smiling. As soon as the Jews show up, you have no idea who the Gentiles are. Hello, Christian Peter. Hello, Saint Peter. Hello? So, any unity, any reconciliation outside of Christ is fake. Any unity outside of Christ is not longevous, is not trustworthy. Because it's based on human failure, human weakness. That's why the Bible says, when Jesus came and he died on the cross, the Bible says, when they pierced him on the side, a new nation was born. It was called the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. When he hung on the cross, a new nation was born because it was a nation that was washed by the blood of Jesus. And our origin comes from the work of the cross. Where we trace who we are and whose we are is from the cross. Everything else divides us. The cross unites us. It brings us together. That is why the Bible says in the book of 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9 to 10. But you are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. His own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Who once were not a people, but now you have become a people of God. Who had not obtained mercy, but now you have obtained mercy. So now God has created for himself a new nation. He calls it a holy nation. 
So there is a nation within a nation. It's called a holy nation. And it's made out of every culture, every tribe, every language. It's called the holy nation. The word holy means separate unto the Lord. Set apart. Yes. You see, when you're at home, there's a cup that belongs to your dead alone. Only him drinks with that cup. No one touches dead's cup. If you touch dead's cup, you are going to be in trouble. Do you know what I'm talking about? That cup is holy unto dead. That's what holy means. Holy means separate, set apart, unique, only for the use of. So when God created a holy nation, he created a nation that's only for him, for his glory, for his honor, for his praise. It's called a holy nation. So when they ask you, so what nationality are you? You say holy. Holy. So yeah, 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 I know, I know we are all holy. But I mean, uh, exactly where do you come from? You say, I come from the place of the cross. That's where I was born. That's where my sins were forgiven. Because that's our, or any other originality, it's a problem. Because blood is thicker than water. But the blood of Jesus is far thicker. I mean, even in marriage, hello, this is just a by the way, even in marriage, take notes, those of you who need to get married, even in marriage, I always tell the couples, if you involve your own families, and you talk to your family and say, you know, my husband this, and then this one says, you know, my wife that, you are causing World War Three. Because families are going to take each other's side. They're going to take the side of their daughter. They're going to take the side of their son. Because it's heritage issues. This is our child. How dare you? This is our. It's all based on human weakness. Our identity is in Christ. Any other identity is fake. Any other, any other identity will offend you will bring you to a place of pride and a place of sin. The real identity is in Christ Jesus. That's why the Bible says in Galatians chapter 3, verse 27 to 28, for as many of you as were baptized in Christ, you have put on Christ. You have done what? You have put on Christ. Therefore, there's neither Jew nor Greek there's neither slave nor free. There's neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ. Today we need to put on Christ. I know we are putting on our traditional what, 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 what. But we need to put on Christ. The real heritage is Christ. Our unity is Christ. So the world can see and say, who? are these that are able to cross culture, able to speak across the culture? Who are these ones who are smiling with each other when we are not able to smile with each other? Who are these who are singing one song when it's difficult for us to sing one song? Who are these who are able to forgive one another and love one another and have mercy to one another when it's difficult? Who are these? These are the ones who are washed in the blood of Jesus. These are the ones who belong to Jesus. These are the ones who have been saved and are declared a holy nation. South Africa is looking for a holy nation. Any holy nation in this house? True reconciliation comes from a people called a holy nation. We must set the example. So I want to pray today as I close. And I want to ask that the Lord will help us. That Father, forgive us for our pride. Hey, pride. Pride. Sounds like a good thing, but hey. In the presence of God, we are before the Lord. We are before God. Our heritage is very divisive, very divisive. 
Outside of Christ, we are already divided. In Christ, we find each other. We find one another. We connect with one another. Am I saying we should deny who we are? No. But I'm saying, let's rediscover who we truly are in Christ. Let's rediscover who we truly are in Christ. Real identity is in Christ Jesus. Let me invite you today. And I want to give this opportunity for you to find your identity in Jesus. If there's anyone this morning who says, I need Christ in my heart. I need to find my identity in Christ. Because my identity in my own self has not fulfilled me. Has not closed the gap of rejection. Some of us have had hurting upbringing backgrounds. Though it's your heritage, but it's full of woundedness. It's full of, you know, tears. It's full of all kinds of bitterness. But today, the Lord wants to bring you in. Into the inheritance of Christ. If that is you today, who says, Pastor, please pray for me before you close. That I will find my identity in Jesus. I will find who I belong to in Christ. And you are here today. You are part of this big congregation this morning. But you know that in your personal life, you have not yet given your life to Jesus. If that is you, we want to make a quick prayer for you and pray for you. If that is you and you are seated there, I'm going to ask you to lift up your hand and say, please, I, I want you to pray for me. I want you to just let God not pass me by. I want to find my identity in Christ. I want to find my identity in Jesus. Wherever I may find myself today, now I know Jesus is my true identity. If there is anyone, I want to pray for you across this place who says, I need to receive Jesus. I need to receive the Lord as my Savior and God. And I'm trying to look, and I'm trying to look, and I'm trying to look, and I'm trying to look. I see a hand. I'm trying to look. If and I see another hand and I'm trying to look and I see another hand. Quickly, can I invite those who've lifted up their hands to quickly come in front here? Let's pray for you quickly, quickly. <laughs> quickly, quickly come. Quickly, quickly come. Quickly come. Quickly come. Quickly come. Can we all stand, please? Can we all stand? Can we all stand? Can we all stand as they come? Can we all stand? As we pray, as you are, yes, the blood has made a way. Yes, you paid the price for you. Yes, come as you are. Let's all stand. Come and be washed. There is power in the blood of Jesus. Hey, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Come as you are. God bless you. Keep coming. Keep coming. The King is calling. Keep coming. Stand before his throne of grace. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. As you are, as you God are. God bless you as you come. The blood has made a way. He paid the price for you to come as you are. Come and be one. There is power. There is power in the blood of Jesus. I want to pray with you today. Please repeat these words after me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I give my life to you. I surrender to you, Lord Jesus. In my life, you are the first. Forgive me for all my sins. Cleanse me for all un from all unrighteousness. Today, I find my heritage in you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that from this moment, I am born again. My sins are forgiven in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give Jesus a hand of praise.
Thank you.